how do you handle workflow on a professional level to keep it all straight? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, first off, I, I use Notion. Um, and are you familiar with Notion, mm -hmm. the platform Notion? Yep. Yeah. So, so I use yes. Notion for two reasons. One, because the, there's an internal facing component to it. And then there's within that, there's an external facing component to it. So I can work on a project. I can have me and my team collect the 75 uh, digital awards that I don't think people are aware of. We can create a, a whole spreadsheet within Notion, and then I can publish that and embed it in my Creator Hub afterwards. So there's, there's a lot of flexibility that I get with that. Um, also understanding, you know, just how, 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 how foundations work, I'll go to a classic SOP. I love, I love SOP as the standard operating procedure. Um, That's right. an, by the way, there's an, for anyone out there who isn't aware of this, there's an awesome uh, service that, called Podcast SOP. Uh, Podcast SOP. Mm -hmm. It's made by the same guy who actually built Podmatch and uh, he's part, it's yep. part of the Pod Pros family. But po Podcast SOP, you know, identifies, acknowledges the fact that there are so many different ways to make podcasts and they're all right. And some people have two people teams. Some people have seven people teams. Some people have three people. Some of them are heavy with social assets. Some of them are heavy with newsletter assets. Some of them are heavy with blogging. So I happen to love blogging because of the aggregation that you can get on blogging. So right. anyway, so so all the unique ways that we so so podcast SOB is one of my favorite platforms to recommend independent creators who are working with more than one person. Who, where they're paying for a service and, and there's a handoff uh, and, and you need to flag the handoff. What I sort of dislike about a lot of the project management tools that are out there is that like everyone my age says that their age, well, we didn't need that software back then. We just trusted everybody. <laughs> we believe that people, you know, there's accountability. And so there, there's something yes. to be said to about, about companies that rush to software to solve some issues that are not software or not not flow or workflow related issues, um, and uh, so so that being said, Notion and Clarity, book <laughs> of mind yeah. and, and, and you know Clarity and, and, and Notion, and Clarity of a mindset, you know Clarity of vision, Clarity of focus, Clarity of goals, you know, and, and, and Notion for me have really helped. Um, I, I would recommend Notion almost across the board nowadays. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. Today we are speaking with Vinny Potestivo. Vinny is a Emmy Award-winning media advisor and a talent development executive. Vinny, could you please introduce yourself? Let people know just a little more about you, please. Thanks so much, by the way. Yeah, that's cool. It's cool to hear you say what I am because that's what I am now. Just last year, I wasn't even an Emmy Award-winning TV producer. Just a 25-year vet is what it was. But the story changes, and that's what I think we're here to share about. Uh, and I'll, I'll, exp I'll explain my award strategy a little later in this episode too. So just a little hint, because I'm big on helping people win awards. Um, uh, but I, I've been uh, graced to have a career in TV since the 90s. Um, I started in community access in Staten Island, where I learned as a data engineer, the power of recording and re-recording and trans transcribing and transcoding and all the all that world. I was I was basically the guy that you called if you needed to get your photos <laughs> to uh, scan uh, for MySpace, <laughs> if you needed a printer fixed and you were creative, I was that guy. Um, by way of uh, school, I have a business degree in theater arts. Um, I was going to be a casting director, so I put out an ad 
uh, I got a big response and that that sort of techie, creative techie inside me said, Vin, create a database so you can store all this information. And, and that, that database and casting was a, a unique step then, which led to um, the uh, to, to connect me with some of the awesome people at MTV and Fox News and CNN and a bunch of news platforms. And, and I got to redefine MTV News. And, and then our department, the talent development department was launched where I got to be a part of modern story, you know, the revolution of modern storytelling, which is unscripted programming with the Osbournes and Newlyweds and Punk. And, and I, I bring all of this up as a, as a way of flagging my shared experience with all y'all. I, I worked on a lot of MTVs for many, many years, many decades. And um, I like bringing that up because it's fun to say I was there. If you watched it and I, I got to make it, then we have something in common. And that, that's nice to know <laughs> that all those hours spent back then off social media can still play a major role in how we connect now. It's major. And, and mm-hmm. I love some of the things that you've done, you know, Thanks. working with some of the talent that you've worked with. It's incredible. And you do this behind the scenes most of the time. But the big news here is Vinny is a podcaster. And (laughs) I love podcasting. So, you know, taking it from backstage and bringing it to the forefront. That's scary to a lot of people. How did you handle it? And how did you bring that into the forefront? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I did it with friends. I did it with people I trusted. I did it with content that I owned, that no one else had control over. That I'll tell you what, we'll talk about this a whole bunch. I, I am such a fan of creating. I have created way more content in my iPhone than anyone will ever see. <laughs> and it's not because it's not appropriate. It's totally appropriate. It's just, it was just my, it was an audience meant for one, for me. And I, I love creating that much. And I, I hope people pick up on, on, on creating for them, not creating for the audience. So many times we create, we pick the best photo, we delete the other ones, we post it on social. That's the end of creating maybe there's networking and socializing afterwards but in terms of the actual act of creating uh it was something that um i wasn't exposed to i didn't have anybody to know like really sort of to 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 teach me that other than blindly going in and saying i was here and i wanted to learn it i had the tech skills and 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 the capabilities of quickly moving and and it worked. It worked, uh, and and it was. It's powerful uh, to see it all, you know, come together. And it's fun, even more so now. Technology and creativity go hand in hand now. Twenty years ago, ten years ago, even people were like, "I don't get it. You, how do you do websites and databases, but also like cast and do unscripted shows?" I'm like, it's it's only because you don't own the show. The network owns the show that you don't understand the process of creating. But now, but now I can come into this world and, and, and by the way, I almost know too much. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes I know things that I shouldn't know and it's not, it doesn't apply to podcasting um, rules or, or, you know, music cues or some things that are permissible, you know, and not, not punishable, but I, I learned otherwise. So and, and times change and, and often the trickle on rules updating is is one of the, unless it's an Instagram, <laughs> it's a slow to trickle yeah. up. But, but I, I appreciate what's happening in technology now. I believe that there's no necessary way to catch up in technology, but only to be prepared for the next new tool, new surface, new platform. It's a lot like surfing. If you want to get ahead in surfing, you don't catch up on a wave that already passed. You just get you, well, I never yeah. said this before, but this is really a great metaphor, actually. It's a great visual for it, but you really don't, right? You wait for the next wave. You get ready. You prepare. And when that next That's wave right. comes, when that next social platform comes, maybe it's maybe it's Amazon AMP. Maybe it's LinkedIn Audio Live Events. Maybe, you know, there's so many more that are popping up. that, uh, Or maybe there's a new tool that will pop up. But it's about being prepared. Yeah, that's right. Preparation is key. And going back, in studying what you actually want to do with your message. Message is key when we start doing interviews like this. 
my message is simple. We want to change lives and stories change lives. So yeah. this is what you do well. I mean, hmm. the, now. the obvious success <laughs> here. Yeah, now. I, exactly. I'll tell you, that, the epic <laughs> fail for me was in my own life when I realized I was a horrible storyteller and and someone taught me the power of storytelling. And I realized how, yeah. how much my bad storytelling controlled, literally dictated the success levels and put a glass ceiling on and a fl and it tightened restraints on everything. And, and, and when yeah. I went, when I went into MTV with that philosophy of we have the power to make, to be storytellers and story changers that we can make our, with that philosophy, it was cool to help artists step into themselves as hosts that was like my first innate way of putting that into action was like don't just be yourself don't just be a great person who could read the script show up if you, if you want to talk about your background if your nationality if your sexuality if your height if the if the if these cultural things matter to you bring it up this is this is the network that we can do that on so and then that was my first innate way of helping people develop story storytelling where, where mtv news where the personalities themselves became the news, not not like you'd seen on traditional, you know, like hard hard news, you know, pl platforms before. And then and then with reality yeah. TV, you know, what, what MTV did right. <laughs> that no 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 music video lover loves when I say this, but <laughs> what music what MTV <laughs> did right was it, it made space for storytelling in in a thirty minute increment. Yeah. It, it had given the power of storytelling to the artist in the three to four to five if you're uh, Aerosmith, nine, 10, Michael Jackson, 15. Yeah, you know? right. But mo right, yep. most three to four minute videos, it gave, it gave the power to the music artist to, to, to tell that story because they were the gatekeepers to culture and community. They were, you know, representatives of culture and community and a lot of times as well. So it made sense. But, but what I got to be a part of at MTV was, was literally the handing of the, of, the, of the microphone and the camera from celebrity to the people, to us, to us, the creators, even, even Ashton Kutcher on Punk, right? Like you think a modern creator, like he was kind of doing selfies back when no one was doing selfies and yeah. very disruptive yeah. way of showing the creative process without it being refined when it could have been refined. It's pretty big what MTV did. Uh, I remember when MTV first came out, it was like shock. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> you know, and TV, it, it brought in, yeah, it brought in the culture of shock jock TV, Howard Stern and things like that. It, it changed the culture of entertainment. And it, it truly, it really, truly did. It, it did. I, I really think uh, it empowered the individual to reach out to himself to understand he does have the power and yeah. then with the internet coming in it just gave well, us this sense of recognition of ourselves yeah right like the, the internet is almost is um uh, yeah the internet the internet coming in uh, 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 allowed us to have control i think over what we saw i think the foreshadowing was the cable boom like in the late 90s you know yeah. when i when i made a conscious effort to to work in television I saw CNN get built. I saw Fox News launch. I saw MTV2 get launched. Yeah. I saw. I grew up watching MTV. Um, also, things happened on television back then, and television mattered. I was so lucky to work at MTV when people watched television that a bunch of eight, 16 and 18-year-olds would fall in love with Ozzy Osbourne's family for no reason other than the fact yeah. that MTV gave them the space to do that. And, 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 and I, it could have been so many other families. It could have been so many other versions of that show. And there, there were many of them after. Um, and that's no, I'm, not, I'm being salty. I'm, I'm sharing the inspiration because it's super cool. Um, and if you're going to be first, you're going to get copied a whole lot. So get ready for that, y'all creators that's out there. Right. Who are that's so right. We're so sensitive about someone taking their ideas. Take my idea. By the way, I have great ideas. Take them. That's why I surround myself with talent. I'm not precious about my ideas. I'm precious. I'm precious about networking, about about relationships. But I'm not precious about ideas. Those I don't own those. Those were given to me by a greater power, singular or or globally. Yeah, right. It That's right. Somehow, somehow, yeah. Some, so I, I really truly do. Well, well, you really you really find the power of creation when you have that sense. You know, yes. because it flows freely then. And what goes out comes back. It's always exciting in many different ways. It's yeah. like 
this podcasting thing. Who would have thought 20 years ago that me and you would be sitting here on Zoom speaking face to face? This is <laughs> awesome. So the power that technology has given us, you've got to recognize it and use it. Yeah. You, you can't just sit on it. You have to figure it out and challenge yourself. It's entertaining in itself to mess up and fail and try again, because yeah. then you're going to get a formula of success. And that's where it really matters. Let's go back to 1998, the fall. Mm -hmm. You purchased a $20 ad in a magazine to get mm -hmm. yourself started. Mm -hmm. How has that really affected Vinny? And why did Vinny even take the chance in the first place on that $20 ad? Oh yeah. Oh, it's so serendipitous that you brought up Howard Stern because it, it is, it's, it's, it's so indicative of the mindset that I was in, the awareness that I had of media and my surroundings then. I remember staying up late to watch Howard Stern, by the way, that, that late show. And I would almost cry because I felt him just being mean. And, and, and I, and, and always, I was always like, who's that? And then Robin Quivers was there who I just always loved. And she kind of put up with him and she, she didn't in any way like um, give, uh, pro, 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 provide, I don't know what to say. Uh, uh, she, she wasn't there to like buffer him. She wasn't there to make it sweet after, you know, she was there to like empower him and make it him. But she had a really strong point of view. What happened to me my senior year in college, and in, in you're talking in 98, um, I, I took a, a class called the Landmark Forum. Robin was actually in, in it with me. Um, and in that class, I learned the power of storytelling. And, and it was in that class that I decided I would, be a, I would be a casting director. But I couldn't wrap my head around, if you just say it, then if you just be it, then you are it. If you just claim it, then you can be it. And yeah. if you want to be it, then just start using the words like future tense. I felt like a little, I felt like a liar. I felt, uh, is, this, is this really true? Like this. But if someone asks me to do something, I'm not going to be prepared. And by the time I got to school, by I got back to school from that, I went to school at Staten Island, so maybe a 45 minute commute on the on the ferry. I would landed on well, if I get called to be a casting director, I have to have headshots. So I'm going to have to take out an ad because I'm going to have to have actors that want to be in projects because I'm telling people I'm a casting director. So at the very least, what I should do is take out an ad and ask people if they want to send me their headshots and resumes for future projects, not even a current one. But for future projects, and they can send it to me, uh, you know, here, and I start and I started my company that way, and that was the that was what <laughs> I got like five hundred responses back. As I said, you know, I, I turned and created wow. a, I created a spreadsheet because I didn't know how to handle that much information, but I knew it was really valuable information, and I wanted to stay in touch with these people, um, and I cast them in everything from. Whitney Houston videos to, uh, um, uh, I don't know, I used to work on a Ready, Ready Set Cook, um, uh, Hannity and Combs. I mean, I worked on so many, to the Tom Green show. I worked on so many weird shows in the very beginning part of my career, but they were, they were all down for it. And they, they came with me and I got to work with them in commercials and some films. And so those, are, those initial 500 people have really stuck with me, by the way. Uh, I can tell you when I run into someone on social media who's who's part of that group because we're it, it's a pretty fruitful group of people um, who are willing to take a chance, willing to to risk you know a, a dollar or two to send me a headshot, not knowing who I was. Little did they know I didn't know who I was, but but they would be the ones that discovered me, and 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 them finding me, it empowered me to lean into my strengths at that point, which was technology. Um, which worked out because there was a tech gap in the casting industry generally and in television uh, generally uh, that I got to, to, to satiate and fill because of my relationship, building skills and casting and then being able to organize that information. I mean, I used to, on MTV, there used to be a show called Wanna Be a VJ and it was like a nationwide search. And I don't know, like we'd search for the next host and there were thousands of people would show up. That was the kind of stuff that I was built for. Oof grids and databases and doot, 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 doot. I couldn't be happier, you know, <laughs> get on my Microsoft access and Excel. And everyone's like, Vinny, what are you doing? I'm like, boop, yeah. boop, boop, here it is. Here's a spreadsheet. Here's how everyone, here's your login information. And, 
and 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 I've always used technology to innovate casting. I've used technology. I, I have a my Facebook account is a .edu because I got on Facebook in like 2005 when they only let academic institutions in. So I had to get an alumni account from school to qualify in. And I'm just, I'm, I just appreciate wow. what tech does. And I, I've leaned hard on technology to introduce my friends, my personal, my, my boyfriend of 11 years now. Um, I've used tech a lot to connect with people, not just on TV shows. So it's funny when you say 20 years from now, who would have thought we would be talking on Zoom? I've been using Skype Recorder for, for about that. Well, probably 2008, maybe. Skype, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, all those. You know, <laughs> yeah, but the technology, is, the oh, technology yeah. has improved quite a bit the, since the technology Skype. Has improved. <laughs> oh, the technology has improved, but more so... Uh, uh, the act of talking to a camera with a microphone and headphones to me and you, this feels very normal. I don't feel uh, an intense spotlight. I don't feel performative. Yeah, I'm not slipping into a different version of, of me that I'm not able and capable of being. So all, all of that has to do with timing of, of tech and culture. For me, that's why it took me so long to get into podcasting. In 2006, I converted my first TV, my first podcast to broadcast TV show called Man and Wife. So I've been aware of podcasting and, and the power of it a long time. Um, but I think it's the perfect storm of, of, of technology and culture. Like this is a very normal pace. And that's how I record my podcast as well with my friends. And then I cut it up and get yeah. super heady and creative and over creative and over edit yeah. it and, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> I, I don't see how you find the time for all of it, Vinny, uh, because oh gosh. boy, it, it is just so much compiled to do podcasting in itself and then you're doing things for everybody else it's yeah you've got a busy day <laughs> um i gotta I, I gotta be i get a little itchy on this one um i i have a kind of busy day i i do the same thing over and over again um it's create a project bring two people together feed that project that project could be a sales project it could be a creative project I have a lot of support in the way that I work that um, that I'm needed and available throughout the day, but very, very rarely do I, am I in a situation where um, there's an emergency and I'm the person that people need to call. I, I probably have something in place already. If, if you are a client that has a certain type of emergency, I've already figured out where that emergency come from so that you have a better source to be able to fix that than like having to, you know, if you're constantly getting locked out of your account or I don't know, give horrible examples, yeah. but like there's some repetitive, yeah. repetitive things that happen in this, this thing. Also, um, uh, uh, I actually, I, I, I work strict hours, um, uh, like Tuesdays and Thursdays generally tend to be client days and Mondays and Wednesdays tend to be days that I can be creative, whether I'm creating my content or your content. And, and then otherwise it's, it's been a nice flow. And I'm not saying that I'm at a place in my career where I can pick and choose the projects I want to work on and, and blah, blah, blah. Although I, I, I do not work on casting projects anymore. I'm happy to take those on and, and uh, recommend a, a casting director that I've worked with and, and point me in the right direction. Um, but I'm at the point where I have to pick and choose my projects because uh, like I'd rather be broke than broken. And I, I know a broken yes. is like I've been exhausted <laughs> and, and I've done that for other people before. So now that I have full control yeah. over my company and my business, my, my and I'm lucky enough to have control over all of those things, I'm, I'm pretty mindful about how, how I set up situations. Also, I try not to do anything once. I try to set it up so it's a stream not necessarily a one-off. Um, like, you know how we think we should be thinking in evergreen versions of content, thinking in like newsletters that we can mm -hmm. then turn, turn into social posts as opposed to social posts that we could be turning into newsletters and sort of that, mm. that social tread. Yeah, that drip content, it, it really matters a lot. And th another yeah. big important thing to enhance yourself is a good pitch deck and i'm guilty of this not having a good pitch deck but you know I, i'm just now starting to really get serious about podcasting seeing hey this kind of enlightening in many ways so you know I'm, I'm really starting to wonder what makes a good pitch deck for 
a podcaster in particular to yeah. send out to people? Yeah, sure. I have, so I, as you know, as you've seen, I have a pitch deck. Uh, and mm-hmm. I call it like a 15 page two pager. What, what it really is, is it's in my two pager. It's about my podcast is one page, all the guests that I'm having have had the business side of me and then one page about me and some of the short successes and top line stuff. Uh, the information, the topics that I like to talk about, uh, accreditations that give me the uh, expertise to talk about some of those things. And any, anything that I think might differentiate me with anyone else you've had this conversation with before, so that out of the gate, you sort of like see where my point of view is. I have about 10 pages of like, maybe you would call it like a press kit, like uh, just appearances, things I've done that have been relevant in major magazines um just to show reach to show that i that that the names have been relevant and have been published already and um if if i know you can go and google me but what i'm trying to do is save you time and give you the best 10 stories or best 10 projects that i kind of really want to you know talk about so i'll have i'll have some press that I used to get from casting Real Housewives of New Jersey or Millionaire Matchmaker. And I love talking about Bravo, you know, in that sector of time where, where people and brands became so not, that's where personal, when, when, in my opinion, people really understood the power of the personal brand was those housewives, man. And to, to see, to be part of the alchemy of that, those franchises and, and, and those women's success, I can speak to that. Um, it's it, but it, yeah and and podcasting is just podcasting isn't it, i just love fascinating with, i'm fascinated with podcasting it's a it's a whole new business sector where hundreds of thousands of people with experience in way different sector business yes. psychology arts science dental legal uh creative art you know so many different perspectives in it and expertise that are coming into podcasting right now it, when everyone started doing that in TV, it got, I don't know, I don't know, it felt a little bit, it didn't have that same impact in TV. Everyone kind of felt like experts. They, they, they got the TV through the yeah. expert funnel or the expert mold. You know, that's how they, they took their right. thing, they turned it into an expertise. But here you're really seeing, it. hey, it's exciting. And you own it. It's intellectual property that you own. I'm that's so right. About, about that's that right. Part. So let's talk about, putting it all together and keeping it all structured. Yeah. Technology is great. I've had that fail on me. So as you can see behind me, I have a board and I have many notebooks that I use hmm. to reinforce and reassure that I know my structure and my flow in case my hard drive fails or whatever. How do you handle workflow on a professional level to keep it all straight? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, first off, I, I use Notion. Um, I don't, are you familiar with Notion, mm-hmm. the platform Notion? Yep. Yeah, so so I use yes. Notion for two reasons. One, because the, there's an internal facing component to it. And then there's within that, there's an external facing component to it. So I can work on a project. I can have me and my team collect the 75 uh, digital awards that I don't think people are aware of. We can create a, a whole spreadsheet within Notion, and then I can publish that and embed it in my Creator Hub afterwards. So there's there's a lot of flexibility that I get with that. Um, also, understanding you know just how 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 foundations work. I'll go to a classic SOP. I love I love SOP is the standard operating procedure. Um, That's right. There's an, by the way, there's an for anyone out there who isn't aware of this, there's an awesome uh, service that called Podcast SOP. Uh, Podcast SOP. Mm-hmm. It's made by the same guy who actually built Podmatch, and uh, he's part. It's yep. part of the Pod Pros family. But po- Podcast SOP, you know, identifies acknowledges the fact that there are so many different ways to make podcasts, and they're all right. And some people have two people teams. Some people have seven people teams. Some people have three people. Some of them are heavy with social assets. Some of them are heavy with newsletter assets. Some of them are heavy with blogging. So I happen to love blogging because of the aggregation that you can get on blogging. So right. anyway, so so all the unique ways that we so so podcast SOB is one of my favorite platforms to recommend independent creators who are working with more than one person. Who, where they're paying for a service and, and there's a handoff uh, and, and you need to flag the handoff. 
what I sort of dislike about a lot of the project management tools that are out there <laughs> is that like everyone my age says that their age, well, we didn't need that software back then. We just trusted everybody. <laughs> we believe that people, you know, there's accountability. And so there, there's something yes. to be said to about, about companies that rush to software to solve some issues that are not software or not, not flow or workflow related issues. Um, and, and so, so that being said, notion and clarity <laughs> of mind yeah. and, 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 you know, clarity and, and, and notion and clarity of a mindset, you know, clarity of vision, clarity of focus, clarity of goals, you know, and, and, and notion for me have really helped. Um, I, I would recommend notion almost across the board nowadays. Um, I, I've worked with Asana, I've worked with social scheduling tools and, um, I've, I've been the head of social at, um, at, at larger skincare companies that have multi-channels. And um, I think that I would recommend any modern business that was looking to really successfully grow their content team to stay away from as much automation as possible. Uh, it's really about who, who can help you, not, not how can you get the results that you're looking for. And if, if, you, if you really... To any small business out there or medium-sized business, if you really focus on the the culture, the employee culture, the talent retention, right? If you're really focused on the people that you have in, are, around you, they should be extensions of the brand too. Um, but Podcast SOP is a great one for podcasters, which I love. Um, uh, and and it's all, yeah, otherwise I, I hate I hate overcomplicate. You know, there there are systems for onlining content, so like. Uh, you know, when you're online in content, you have to share a single for source file with 50 people who all have to edit it at the same time and get it out. You know, maybe a modern a modern case for that would be a, 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 a fashion show where there's content and then it needs to be quickly cut and disseminated out, you know, um, or, or or an award show, you know, would have the sort of same the same need. Um, but I think clarity more than more than technology to your point. Um, and, and, and okay, here's my three answers. Clarity, notion, and post-it notes. <laughs> I like post-it post notes. notes. <laughs> I love a good old post-it note because you can crumble it up and throw it away in success or in yeah. failure. I like the physical, the physical, I like the, there's the foldy art, the <laughs> yeah. crunching of the paper and, you know, yeah. just the finite, the finality yeah. of it. I don't know. Um, yeah, I do. I have a bunch of, I have a bunch of white post-it notes, by the way. It's the weirdest thing, but I just put it in. Yeah, I, I <laughs> love to tear a piece out of the notebook and crumple it up to yeah, when, when that, space. that gives you a sense of responsibility, I think. <laughs> yeah, when I create, the first thing I do when I create is make space. Um, it's kind of like, I think what I love about creating in technology was that I I didn't have to move to make the file size bigger, to make the hard drive larger, to make more. I can make the project bigger without, you know, I, there was, I, it wasn't as locked, you know, as you are here. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got checklists and boards and projects and motions and, and also a bit of a real rhythm to how everything goes. And they, and they all work together too, for me, that was important. Was that I didn't do anything that like didn't didn't support the thing I was. You know, everything needs to support each other. Otherwise, then I'm doing too many things. Now what I'm doing is just a lot of little things that just make <laughs> the bigger goal yeah. that that much you know sweeter for me. Yeah, yeah. So, how do we uh, define a celebrity? Yeah. You, you've worked with many celebrities. How do you define a celebrity? Yeah, I think a celebrity is someone who's celebrated. Yeah, I think plain and simple, someone who's celebrated. I think so there could be local celebrities, yeah. there could be national celebrities. Also, my definition of talent has changed. You know, talent, you know, and I would say actually, hmm. if you were to look globally, I think talent is probably skill. Uh, it can be innate, you know, or learned. It can be you can be born with it, or it can be something you study really hard at and get great at and exposed exposed to for ten thousand hours. And you know, um, I think that combination of being celebrated and having a unique skill is really cool. That that's what makes us different. That's what that's what makes us stand out. Is 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 this tool that we have and the way that we use it. 
if we just stood out because of the tool we had and we didn't use it, there would be fizzle and there would, that would not be a sustainable, you know, strategy, but yeah. it, it's, so for example, it's an artist figures out, they stand out with a certain vocal trill or a certain octave thing. You'll see that they tend to stay in that place because that's where they stand out and they stand out successfully. Mariah Carey, Whitney, like I can think of some of the, some of the singers that, yeah. that don't even need to sing more than one or two notes before you know you know where they go because they come in so high in their register and um and and that stands out you know or low by the way too right so and i, I think it's that yeah. ability of of practicing that skill knowing that it's never going to be perfect but you're just practicing it practicing it as you're performing in front of the emmys practicing it as you're performing on the tonys or practicing it as you're you know, where, wherever your special skill is, um, it's constantly yeah. sort of elevating. And and let's and talk about oh, I was sorry, gonna say man. the modern celebrities. The modern celebrities, you know, it's it's. Uh, I would say this: you don't control your celebrity brand. People want to build their celebrity brand. Like, well, you don't, but you don't. That's how to not. I don't know how to do that. How do you do that then? No, everyone, your your audience, your fan, you know, your following, your fans, your audience, your public. Yeah. They, we control. We build yeah. your celebrity. Yeah. So you have to give yeah. us the pieces to build it with an album, a show, a story. If you're Jennifer Lopez, a marriage, a breakup, a marriage, <laughs> you have to give us these pieces so that, but it's all part of it. Yeah. yeah it's great. Yeah. It's, and it, that's, and right. it's, that's what makes that's lifestyle, by the way, that's what makes her a lifestyle brand is like, that's lifestyle. That is like emotional love tormented, but not, not afraid to try it. Who can't relate to that? Sometimes? That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, and, you know, standing out comes in many forms. You've just got to pick one and go with it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. let's talk about yeah. awards, Vinny. You, you bring up, uh, you have to apply yourself to get awards, to stand out and get known in the industry. How do people do that? Oh, there, by the way, I, I did some research. There's about 75 digital awards I found that I don't think people even know exist. I mean, if you send emails, if you're a marketer, if you're a podcaster, if you've been a guest on podcasting, if you if you stack a bunch of you know projects, uh, uh, if you stack a bunch of like technology together, IFTT, and you you've got a bunch mm -hmm. of things you know stacked on top of you. There's even the stackies, which is like my literal favorite you know awards. There there's a way to stand out, and and some of them are more expensive than others, but all of them require uh, an application. Some of them require an application fee, but all of them require intent. So there's no one walking around saying, hey, would you like an Emmy? Hey, you should be Tony nominated. Hey, you were, hey, you came out with an album. So you obviously you're going to be up for the like, best album of the year, right? That's not how it works. Like the label has to pay money to be considered. That's what thank you for your consideration means, Maron. It means I paid yes. you. Yes. So make it yes. count. And depending on depending on what award there are even more expensive campaigns that come in. You know, we hear often, thank you, Hollywood foreign press. You know, there are, there are press campaigns that are going on that, that when someone's winning, thinking of the Hollywood foreign press, they're, they're thinking the, the campaign, the way that the, the project, their image was used in promoting that project as well. They're thinking the cooperation, you know, of the press. So, so anyway, I love helping people stand out and, and I, I urge you to come to my creator hub on my website, vpe.tv. It's a free site. Come and sign up and get access to podcast awards, TV awards, video awards, audio awards. Um, you want to be on awards because uh, one, when people are looking for the best of the best, we'll oftentimes start from award list and move backwards. If I need to find a public, a, a, a lawyer to speak in my class, I might go to legal podcast award winners and see if anyone in my area, because I just know that that person would be a, a good speaker. They've won an award, so a group of people have already you know, voted on them. And then there are some really cool benefits to it. If you have your podcast uploaded to IMDb, um, which, which most people don't, and you can't listen to podcasts on IMDb, but you can get credit as an executive producer, as a host, as a production company, as an award winner, you know, all of those data points can get converted into get get converted there on imdb and i don't know any place else uh on the internet that's telling google 
your production company, that it's an award-winning production company, that you're an executive producer yeah. and the host. I don't know any other website other than IMDb that feeds that to Google right now. And it is power. It's a powerful tool for podcast discovery. Yeah. Uh, another good one like that is Pod Chaser. I think they're putting oh, yeah. a good package together. Yeah. Pod uh, Chaser. It out, yeah. It, it outlines guest and host very well in their shows. So I, I really like what the space is doing for people in podcasting. Uh, let's talk about distribution. What is the best form of distribution and how can you leverage that to your advantage? Yeah. Look, I think that the, the more distribution cooperation you have, meaning like the, the more strategic relationships you have where someone is waiting for your content to distribute it, you know, mm -hmm. then, then you're, you're getting in a ter into, into territory where your podcast is no longer just for fun and you've got someone's ecosystem depending on your content. You've, you've now got a published date that you're locking into. So there are, there are commitments that come when you start to grow your distribution. So I just want to throw that out, out first and foremost. Uh, and also there are, I promise you, <laughs> this is funny to say, but I promise you, whenever you became a podcaster, I promise you there are more podcast platforms now than there were back then. So I yes. promise you there's a new <laughs> list of platforms you need to go and just yes. make sure we know that Apple and RSS and, you know, and Apple's changing a lot. Apple's, Apple's made a lot of changes in the indie podcast space from the way we're discovered in charts to the information that's yes. being shared in our RSS links now, um, which might compromise platforms like Podchaser who have, well, Podchaser is different because they have access to our usernames and our email from us, but there are other ways to get our email addresses through our RSS link that you know, are now going away for protection purposes. Um, yes. Uh, so first and foremost, that right. So go back, look at your podcast discovery dis uh, discovery platforms, and make sure that you're either, you're there. The other thing I, I focus on is uh, is a lot. Of, oftentimes, we'll come up with an episode, and then we'll think about how to repurpose it, how to advertise it, sort of afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I love to throw this this idea of prepurposing out there to be aware that you're going to have to advertise for this episode. So before you're even done finishing the episode to be mindful of what does that 15, 30, 45, what is that? So what, what do the pieces look like, feel like? What are you creating that you can potentially be pulling from it? Um, I love podcasting and blogging right now uh, because I think that because I can make podcasting topics stand out as strong as blog topics are standing out. Um, using an, I use Q and the aggregator Q. So uh, vpe.tv mm -hmm. slash Q, U, 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 three U's. And what that does is if you, if you log on and you just want podcast marketing blogs, you'll now be served my podcast episode as a blog. You don't need to know my name, my podcast name, what channel I'm on, who my guests were, all the things that we tend to spend time and energy marketing and, you know, yeah. devoting 90% of the energy on. For, for discoverability purposes, what I'm able yes. to do with the blog is take the topic and put it put it under a person's nose who's looking for I, I like to, for people to be discovered where they where they want to be found. So if, if the conversation that we're having is about podcast marketing, when someone wants a podcast marketing blog, you better believe <laughs> that I want them to find my otherwise I'm not going to try to magically have them land on my term from the middle of, maybe they'll land maybe they'll find me on google maybe they'll you know i can be a lot more specific and direct and in, with the intent of when and how and where i want to be discovered so so that's a it's been a really fun uh, uh way to help distribute the content digitally not not from an audio perspective necessarily um but more so from blog perspective so people discredit you know the blog and they, they were focusing a lot now i feel like on social media content, which is so fleeting. Um, in fact, the only thing I would say is if, if you were lucky to get Reels pay, Reels play, if you're lucky enough on Instagram to get Reels play, then make as many Reels from your podcast content as you want, because, you know, in, in luck, you can get paid for the distribution and reach of that. And, and Instagram really is rewarding Reels. Um, maybe on an Instagram account, maybe I wouldn't recommend that strategy on someone's personal account. 
um, just because of the, because I like to separate, I like to separate podcasts and personal accounts. So that's just my, I know my own personal preference of strategy. Um, and have fun. I think it's just about, about making, <laughs> making a mess and making it make sense. Sometimes, you know, creating with yeah. curiosity and with, with mindful collaborations, it's, it's in the alchemy. You can't, you can't mess up if, if the intent is right, if the steps are right, um, if the That's timing right. is right, you know, all, all, all that. Yes. Matters. Uh, collaboration is very important, you know, reaching out to people. It's some of the hardest things to do. Uh, could you touch on that really quick for us? Yeah, collaborate it. Yeah, cl- yeah, it's uh um <laughs> I I laugh because I struggle, you know, in casting, I struggled, you know. I uh I could go up and approach almost anybody. I can talk to anybody as long as I I had something to talk to them about casting wise. I put a lot of emphasis on that opportunity that I was presenting to them more so than the value that I brought into the room just by being a human being. Um when I created my podcast, I created my podcast to go back and talk to friends and people I've worked with already. Um, as I'm sitting around in the podcast circles, everyone's talking about how much fun it is to meet people on podcasts. And I'm like, oh man, I don't, I don't get to have that experience because I, I chose to you know, cast and stunt my shows slightly differently. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking to people I already know and it allows for a very different type of relationship than you know, first meeting first time. But because of my casting background, I'm, I'm strong in the room and getting to respectfully know people. And I love asking questions and taking them on journeys. And I've been doing that my whole professional career. So I, I created, I have a podcast.com so that I could be social with people, so that I could be networking with people um, that I, I otherwise wasn't. And it's that's important to me. Uh, I'm not trying to grow a following for no random reason. I'm just trying to make impact. If those people stick around, that's great. And I'll have lots of reasons for them to do so. But my real goal, like the reason why I make podcasts, and I don't, I don't call it a podcast network, is I don't want your journey to end with me. If I'm a podcast network, then my goal is to bring in advertising and I, there's ownership rights. And I don't want to own your content. I want you to own your content. I already, I already worked. I already bought other people's content from them for a living, gave it to a publicly traded company, TV company, media company. And I've already sort of done that. And uh, I think it's magical what we could do here now. And and all that stems from collaborating. And um, that's right. And, 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 and I've never had an hour that I was collaborating on a project where I felt, you know, it, I, I, I didn't bring, I didn't get what I was hoping for, or I didn't bring what I was looking to, you know, give. So that's right. Well, our time is fleeting us, Vinny. It's fascinating talking to you. And, you know, you have a lot of great things to offer. What would a call to action be for our listeners today? Create. Just create, just pick up your phone. Don't even post, don't even publish. I'm not even there yet. Just create something that makes you laugh. Create something that makes you want to share it. And then you can share it. I'm not telling you to create something that does not have the intent to see the light of day. I'm just saying, pick up that phone and create, create that muscle memory of creating. I was lucky to work at MTV, as you may have heard in this interview, when live TV mattered. I went to I went to I was yeah. going to say school. I went to work every day. There I I we had a, we had a show called Total Request Live TRL Live three thirty, uh, showing up and being there. And it matters. It matters. It matters. And I was lucky to build that creative muscle back then. But uh, that's something that I think we all all can be working on. It's just our ability to create create when we want to, not when it's the right time for our audience, not when they want. Yeah. That's publishing and posting. Different story. It's time to create, follow your heart, follow, follow your mind, follow your gut. Otherwise, you'll just, we're just going to end up <laughs> poorly recreating trends and missing the mark when, when we can be trusting ourselves a little bit more and then taking those trends and nailing it with you know, our goals and our, our, you know, the ethos that make us us. So create, all that comes from creating. 
Yes, create. I love that. And uh, how can people get a hold of you, reach out to you, and share your passion with other people? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, Vinny Potestivo on LinkedIn. I respond pretty quickly. And my website's vpe.tv, five letters, vpe.tv, super quick. Come on over. I got my creator hub where I, I share all the digital awards I think that you probably aren't aware of. I also have about 50 influencer creator marketing platforms. So if you're looking to make money and you don't know how to make money in, in podcasting or in social, here's a place to start. This is where brands are looking. Uh, and access to my whole toolkit, about 500 links that I use literally every single day. Every, well, every month, I should say. Um, from publishing to ag aggregating content, to analytics, you know, uh, verifying social media, all, all of it. I share it all there. VP. Well, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing with us today, Vinny. You're a fascinating person with a lot of experience in the media world. So I encourage people to hook up with Vinny. Thank you for Thanks being so. here today. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.